um, right. formulate the uh, the orders. I said the situation is is uh, bad. I said we're uh, 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 these are your uh, your orders, and this is what you have to do. Uh, and he still kept complaining. And I said, well, you just watch me. I said because I you are under all cover here. I said I've got to go out and, and, and in full view of the enemy and find the second nineteenth to bring them back, right. and you have to give them covering fire. Uh, however, I, I, uh, I got over the, uh, the situation. Then I got back to uh, headquarters, and um, then my company commander, uh, Major Tom Vincent, became commander of the 2nd 19th Battalion. And the moment he got that order, he, he called his Sergeant Major, Sonny Loy, uh, uh, John Joseph Loy, uh, to make a reconnaissance of the the, uh, the camp and come back and report to him. Now, Sonny Louis, I, I regard him as one of my heroes. He was he'd been so shot up round the uh, the jaws that he had to hold the top one hand on top of his head and the other on his chin and work his mouth with his hands to get his orders out. Um, <coughs> he said to um, uh, Major Vincent, "Where am I going to get uh, ten men? He said, We've all already lost about two hundred. Well, he said, take Edwards. And I said, you'll need me, won't you, sir? He said, yes, he says, I'll need you. But he said, I need you over there tonight. He found a, a gap on the west side of the road of about 100 um, yards, metres now, I suppose you'd say, uh, with not a single man in it. Uh, then he said, uh, where am I going to get the rest? Well, he said, take Harrison. Now, Lynn Harrison was his, uh, his batman. And he said the same thing. He said, you'll need me, won't you, sir? He said, I want you over there tonight. Then he found eight others. That made the ten of us. So he led us over, uh, positioned us in this, hundred, uh, in this gap of uh, about 100 yards. Uh, now, Lenny Harrison was even smaller than me. And his, name, his nickname was Crow. If you didn't answer him, if you didn't call him Crow, he wouldn't answer you. Now, when we uh, were put in our positions, Crow was right on the bank of the river. Then me then the other who I didn't know the other eight. Uh, we spent the night there. Next morning, Crow said to me, uh, Edwards, can you swim? Because he said, if things get uh, tight here and uh, I've got to jump in the river, he said, I'd drown. So I crawled to where he was and he crawled to where I was and we hadn't been there for 30 seconds when a Japanese uh, tank broke through the edge of the jungle and uh, fired down that line. Now. I looked round and what was left of Crow you could have put in a plastic bucket 30 seconds before it was me. I, th I, I suddenly thought to myself, well, uh, I think I've got a guardian angel. And after all, uh, if I do go, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I'm only just another soldier at any rate. So we gathered together after a bit of a lull. We waited a while and uh, I, I suppose it would been about 30 men on that side of the road over the west side. Um, I, as I walked along these other, they're all dead, all the, uh, I sort of put my foot on them and gave them a bit of a roll with my foot. And they, oh, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. They, they got a lot of them, except me. Um, we got to the other end and there was another fellow there. He, uh, uh, he was the driver of, uh, of a uh, Bren gun carrier. Now a Bren gun carrier is not a tank. It's uh, got um, tracks on it, but uh, it's not a tank. It uh, doesn't have a big gun on it. Its, its role was to shift Bren guns from one position to the other was, uh, quickly. Um, and I you know, put my foot on him and I said, I think he's dead. And uh, um, another chap said, no, he's not. He said, I saw his eyes roll. So uh, we picked him up and uh, it was uh, Sergeant uh, Mark Lever. Uh, the other chap that uh, said he uh, was uh, Sergeant Clary Thornton from the uh, 4th Anti-Tank Regiment. So uh, we... Uh, uh, I think there were about uh, eight of us there and we decided that we would send a man over the other side of the road to headquarters to see what was going on and he came back and he said there's no one there only the dead and dying and uh, said, go back over another look. Uh, what they had done, they had moved upstream and they'd forded the river and got away. Uh, so we uh, were in a position then where we uh, uh, decided we would go west uh, and try and cross the river lower down and get back to Singapore. In the meantime we uh, came across a, a group of Indians. Now there were uh, 
a, a whole brigade of Indians. They were untrained, and all they did was yell out. We tried to uh, uh, get them to leave us. We'd stop, they'd stop. We'd move on, they'd move on. Uh, and one poor fellow had his, uh, he was carrying his hand, one hand and the other just hanging by a few sinews. And we couldn't do anything because we couldn't speak their language and we couldn't have done anything any right. So we uh, marched along carrying uh, uh, Mark Lever. Uh, you know, you carry a soldier, uh, put your arms around his shoulders and he drags his feet. Uh, we uh, suddenly came along, uh, found a little bit of a road. And in the distance were about 30 or 40 men with those um, pith helmets. I call them tiger shooting hats. You know, the, uh, you see them on the movies. Uh, now the last information we had was that uh, there were two uh, British battalions coming to, uh, to help us. And we thought, ah, they're the British. Uh, so we, uh, instead of, we were still walking along in this, in, in this staggered uh, um, formation. So we uh, broke formation and uh, uh, walked right across the road in full view of them. <coughs> Out from the side of the road ran a Japanese officer with his sword up and it was like a it was like a scene out of a Gilbert and Sullivan uh, opera. Here's this Japanese uh, officer with his sword up and there was uh, Jimmy Harrison, no relation to uh, Crow, then me and Jimmy had a Bren gun and he just very coolly turned the Bren gun round on this officer and he knew that if he took another step he'd been cut in half. Uh, so what did he do? But he just very quietly put his sword back in its scabbard. By this time the, uh, the 20 or 30 other men were, were honest, they were Japs, they weren't British at all. So uh, uh, the sergeant, uh, says, no, 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 no use of fighting, he said they'll just do, do the lot of us. So uh, just stand up, leave your rifles on the ground and we were prisoners of war. Uh, Charles, can we, you, you've, now, you've just told us that you've become prisoners of war. Can you now tell us how you moved to uh, Purdue Jail, Purdue Jail, and a little bit about your existence there, then the time frame to when you moved down to Singapore and how yep. you got there, yep. and then what conditions were like in Singapore. Well, uh, this Japanese officer uh, must have, uh, it was a very little known fact that the uh, Japanese soldier, the frontline soldier, carries a little calico bag on his belt with uh, barley sugar and high protein biscuits. Uh, now we had been, I suppose, uh, a month, uh, wait a minute, yeah, three weeks anyway, we, we hadn't had a shave and our uniforms were tattered and torn. Uh, we, we were hungry and desperately thirsty and he uh, uh, must have recognised this because we had spared his life. I, the, only, the only reason that I can think of that he spared, we'd spared his life and he ordered his men to give us some of their water and some of their barley sugar and biscuits. And I thought to myself, well they're not so bad after all, are they? But uh, he then handed us over to another Japanese and he marched us along to a, um, uh, back to the road. And I don't quite know where this road was, but uh, there he lined us all up and um, I, I was about, by now we, were, we had 11 men there, we picked up two or three on the way. He uh, lined us up, came along to the first one and he put his foot in front of, uh, we all, by now we had to stand to a kiotsky, Japanese attention, we uh, very quickly learnt that. Uh, they have two, uh, t uh, two orders, kiotsky and yasmi, that's uh, attention and rest. 